Mr. Donald Edward Reichard was born on July 4th, 1933, on a Saturday afternoon, but his life would contradict the essence of the day he was born. Mr. Reichard grew up in Lebanon with four other siblings and planned to go into the printing business after high school, but with the Korean War starting, he felt obligated to serve his country. The start of the war was Mr. Reichard's motivation for his plans for the Navy, and enlisted while still in high school. Mr. Reichard was 17 at the time, and, being underage, had to get his sister's permission, since she was the legal guardian. After the paperwork was signed, Mr. Reichard was officially enlisted in the U.S. Navy, and as soon as he graduated high school, was on his way. Mr. Reichard attended basic training in Bainbridge, Maryland, and recall it to be an overall difficult experience. Mr. Reichard's chief petty officer at boot camp was a World War II veteran, and he took out his anger of being reassigned to a pet petty officer out on those men going through boot camp. All of these men were pushed extraordinarily hard to be in their peak physical condition. Mr. Reichard recalled that this particular officer as one of the ha hardest he had ever encountered during his time in the Navy. He was all military, to put it in Mr. Reichard's words. He followed the rules to the letter and made sure everyone else did as well. Such extreme strictness made it especially hard to go through basic training, and laid a basic understanding for Mr. Reichard as to what his service would be like. Once in the Navy, Mr. Reichard served on the USS Salem CA-139, on the 1st Division Deck Force. He worked on the front of the ship where there were two mounts of 8-inch guns. These guns were his station. Mr. Reichard described his time on Deck Force only as an all-Navy experience. He said that that was the place where rank, as well as the rules and regulations, came into play heavily. He listened to superior officers and didn't dare break a rule. Mr. Reichard worked on the deck force for 18 months before he was offered a different position. The next position that Mr. Reichard held was in the print shop on the ship. He was eager for this job because his brother had already been working there and he knew it was a breeze compared to what he usually did. In addition, Mr. Reichard had experience from high school print shop as well as his summer job in the printing business. Throughout Mr. Reichard's several years on the USS Salem, each year yielded very different results. Mr. Reichard's first year on the Salem was more of a learning year, and it gave everyone time to know what their specific job was and what daily life on the ship was like. His second year on the Salem was more eventful because the Salem was chosen by the United States government to be a goodwill ship. The Salem traveled to over 21 different countries in a single year, as a goodwill ship. Mr. Reichard recalled fondly upon that eventful year and noted that life couldn't have been better. The ship traveled to places like Villa Francis, Nice, Cannes, Monte Carlo, Venice, Athens, and Istanbul. However, visiting foreign countries at that time, being careful was one of the most worrisome things on everyone's mind. While traveling to these places in Italy and France, among others, the sailors had to respect the local laws as if they were American laws, and if the laws weren't followed, the local police weren't afraid to tell someone they stepped out of line. Going into a foreign city was, alone was strictly prohibited, and men were only allowed to travel in groups of two or three in order to safely travel. Curfew was strictly kept in order to prevent any unnecessary trouble in these foreign ports. Although the Salem traveled to many different ports, its home port became Villa Francis, France. There were a few other ports that the Salem stayed in longer than others, those being Naples, Italy, and Barcelona, Spain. During his time in all of these countries, Mr. Riker remembers having important diplomats on board. Diplomats such as presidents of countries and even the occasional king and queen. However, not many of the sail sailors got too excited when these people came for a visit. In fact, it was quite the opposite. This reaction was because diplomats coming on board meant a clean white uniform and a spit shine shoe. The sailors would stand in line at attention and would be very respectful and speak to each person using their title only. During Mr. Reichard's third year aboard the USS Salem, he had a very different experience than the previous years. The ship was no longer being commissioned as a goodwill ship, but instead was ordered to help various places that were going through temporary hard times and which needed Navy intervention. One anecdote that Mr. Reichard shared was when the Salem was called to Greece. One of the biggest earthquakes ever recorded hit Greece, and the sailors of the Salem were going to help by handing out food and generally assisting those in need. And they said we were heading for, heading for Greece. That uh, one of the biggest earthquakes ever recorded 
hit Greece. And we were going in there to see what we could do to help out. And uh, the group I was with, when we went ashore, uh, we had to go up to, uh, uh, I forget the name of the town, the penitentiary, and the walls fell. And <laughs> the prisoners were all over the place, you know, so you had to be careful. But uh, everything worked out fine. A short time after the trip to Greece, the crew headed for Trieste. There were the beginnings of an uprising, and Americans were in possible danger. The 1st Division of the Salem, that being the division Mr. Reichard was a part of, went into Trieste with an attachment of Marines. During leisure time, some groups would get together and play games like Pinochle or Cribbage. While in foreign countries, the sailors would often visit the tourist attractions like the Pantheon in Athens or bullfights in Italy. Otherwise, people would take advantage of this free time and write, read or write home to friends and family. Mr. Riker took advantage of his free time in many ways, but he always found time to send home to send home letters or postcards to his brothers and sisters at home. He recalled sailing into ports and seeing people hauling giant mailbags off to the stateside. Mr. Riker's service ended in an average way compared to others who entered the service like he did. It was late September, and the Salem sister ship, the Newport News, came over to relieve her. And after a short sojourn to the Caribbean, sailors started getting discharged. Anybody with a certain amount of time left was sent over to an outgoing unit in Boston. Mr. Reichert had not filled his required time yet, so he was sent to Boston along with everyone else. However, once he arrived, he found out that instead of keeping him and anybody else there, everyone was discharged. He would have gotten discharged either way, because he went in at 17, and when that happens, it is called a kiddie cruise. That means by the time he turned 21, he had to be discharged. However, getting discharged back then wasn't much like it is today. Once Mr. Record got his paycheck, went home, and started his career in the printing business. All in all, Mr. Record worked 41 years in the printing business after he got out of the Navy. After his discharge, Mr. Record kept in touch with a few of his friends from the Navy. He had one friend from Kentucky and another one from New York. But as life goes on, it got harder and harder to keep in touch. Through all his time in the service and having the experience of living life with Navy influence, Mr. Record viewed his service in the Navy as time well spent. He enjoyed his time and appreciated the lessons he learned from his experience in the Navy. Thank you for your service to our country, Mr. Riker. God bless.